All right, uh, joining us now, somebody else who's uh, proven his me uh, medal as a leader uh, all the way up through growing up and, and a standout athlete at Derby, Kansas, came to Oklahoma State. And uh, I, I, I honestly hate to say this to Devin Hedgepith, but I try not to forget any of the young men that I have the opportunity to cover and, and be on the sidelines with at Oklahoma State. Um, but you know, there's a lot of kids that come through. There's a lot of young men. And while I'd like to think I, I can remember all of them and look at them and say, Oh yeah, that's so, you know, that's him. That's, that's Taylor Cornelius or, you know, that's, uh, uh, you know, that's Denisio cook. That's, you know, I just, you know, I'm, I'm trying to pull out different names. That's Matt Fodge, you know, that's, you know, but, um, yeah, it doesn't always work that way. That's Dion Amati. I see. I'll never forget Dion Amati because Dion's a good friend, and I, I've gotten you know to know Dion you know beyond football. But uh, we bring in Devin uh, Hedgepith now, and I gotta admit, son, you are one I will never forget. And it's not for the right, it's it, the right reasons now. But the one reason that I know I will never forget you is I was there when you got hurt and. You know, that was tough. That was tough. I hate yeah. to bring that up to start the interview, but no. Uh, no. And, and you know what? We had a young man that, that left the game um, yesterday. Uh, offensive lineman Dylan Galloway announced that he's not going to play. That's has that, his degree. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he's had the shoulder, repeated shoulder injuries. And people just don't understand. This is a... College football is a hard game. For you, it was the Achilles three times in one year. And um, I just I, I just hated that. I mean, hated that for you. Yeah, it was definitely a, a tough time in life. And, um, you know, first of all, I just want to thank you for, for having me on. I've appreciated the relationship that we've been able to develop over the years since playing days. But, yeah, I, I think it's, it's – you know, a lot of people don't really understand how difficult injuries can be in college football. And I, I think it's because they um, automatically assume that the only adversity that you face is a physical one. But there's so much that goes on mentally when you get when you get injured in college. You know, you come in as a high schooler and it's your dream to play on the big stage and you have the opportunity and you work just so hard. You sacrifice almost every second of every day. Um, for your craft, and, and you're just going all out. You're putting in as much effort, as much energy as you can. But then when you get injured, it's really, uh, in some cases, taken from you. And you have to have the mental fortitude to take a step back and say, one, how am I going to overcome this physical injury? But then, two, how am I going to mentally stay tapped into the game, right, make sure that I can still – execute the playbook when I'm back. And by the way, I still have to um, do my best in the, the classroom as well. So it's tough. I, I think getting injured in college, playing, playing any college sport is, is a difficult thing to go through. You know, and I think one of the toughest things about that, and this is where, you know, the, the great thing about Devin Hedgepith, folks, is you can look at the, the setbacks. You can look at the injuries. You can – Look at those, but what you find every time you 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 know start looking past the the initial layers is you find someone that overcame, and I think that's the best word to describe Devin Hedgepith. He overcomes, and he always has, and he always will. And one of the worst things about being hurt, in fact, you your friend uh, Dion and I were talking about this, yeah, because uh, he he went through it with a knee injury. Um, oh, yeah. But you, you kind of feel like all of a sudden you're not part of the team because you, you're not out there every day in practice. And and I really and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I really thought you stayed in the conscious of your teammates during the time you were hurt. And then when the time you had to leave, you know, leave the game and say, OK, I can't come back and play after the third Achilles injury. I don't know that you ever left the conscious of your teammates because Coach Gundy kept bringing you up. 
he'd bring up your academic prowess right. and how you were doing there. I think he allowed you to stick around and be a leader amongst your teammates, even though you couldn't actually do it on the field. He trusted you to be a leader off the field. Talk about talk about that because I, I really, more than any athlete in football that I've ever seen at this school that had to give up the game because of injuries, your, your name is the one that stayed present. Do you agree yeah, or disagree? I, 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 I fully agree. I, I mean, I, I have so much respect for Coach Gundy and that, that coaching staff because they did keep me uh, – not only did they keep me tapped into the, the team, um, but they also understood that I had a very – um, hyper even even more so than usual, right? A hyper focus on my education because I was trying to get the engineering degree, which is not typical for for someone who comes to that their program. And so I, I really feel like they worked with me to make sure that I had the the time available, the resources available to get my engineering degree. Um, but you're right. I think you know Coach Gundy and the staff were very uh, intentional. I would say on keeping me involved. Uh, my teammates did a great job of supporting me. If anything, Robert, to be honest, I I was probably the one out of the entire process that did not do the best in, in keeping um, in touch with the, the team. A lot of my interaction moving forward after my injuries with the team was either the team pulling me in, the, the training staff pulling me in, or the coaches pulling me in. Because it was tough. I mean, like I said, the, the mental... Uh, the mental adversity that you have to go through is, is difficult. And for me, it was extremely tough to, to watch my teammates play, um, to watch them train, to be in the locker room, to be in the, the film room. And it was by no means was it an envy thing. Uh, you know, I had so much pride in watching them. I, I remember I would get emotional uh, when, when I could sit down and watch. I would get emotional watching Dion run around on the field and Justin Gilbert run around on the field and just my because they're my friends, right? I formed a relationship with these guys and you want to see them succeed and you want to see them do well. And so I was extremely excited and happy for them. But at the same time, it, it's tough because you put so much work and effort into something and it ends. And there's really nothing you can do about it when it comes to a career ending injury. So um that was extremely difficult for me, but I, I do appreciate and have a lot of respect for the Oklahoma State uh, staff and team because they did a tremendous job of trying to keep me in the loop. And I think one of the, the other reasons why my name continued to come up was because I chose to take a leadership role slightly differently than um, what some others may do. I think a lot of guys would try to get involved in, a, in the film room and coaching on the field, which I, I did portions of that. But for me, I really leaned into the mentorship aspect of it, right? You had young guys like Mike Tavius Jones and Jonathan Griffin and um, Kevin KP who came through, Kevin Peterson and um, Ashton Lampkin. And for me, I really just leaned into the mentorship side of it because I truly am passionate about that in life. I love to talk about leadership. I love to see – younger people, you know, regardless of the age, I love to help people to progress in life and talk about leadership and see people improve. And so that's really the the, the spin I tried to have on uh, staying with the team was leaning into the, the mentorship side of things. And, and I can see where you describe uh, the, the, you know, whether it was your teammates or the medical staff or, or the coaching staff pulling you back in because – there were day. I mean, you're you're not even out there, and at the end of practice, uh, when they talk about academics, Coach Gundy's bringing your name up. Says you guys need to talk to Devin Hedgespeth. Right. This is a guy that knows how to get it done in the classroom. He knows how to budget his time. He's available. You guys need to seek him out and say, Devin, how are you doing this? Because I need to get better in the, in the academics. And he would push you out there as an example of somebody who really knew how to to navigate their way through uh, the academic maze that college can be. And uh, especially in a major, like you said, that, that, that is a time, you know, it, it's, it's a time eater. Engineering is a time eating uh, major that if you're not organized and you don't know what you're doing, you're not going to make it. 
So a lot of times you wouldn't even be out there and, and you'd be, you'd be mentioned. Yeah. And I appreciate you bringing that up. I actually wasn't even, even aware of that, so, but it just speaks to the character of the organization, the character of, of coach Gundy. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you, you have to understand every, every person on your team provides a, a benefit, right? Everybody has a role on the team, whether it's on, on the field or off the field. And so off the field, you've got to make sure that you have the right leaders in place to, uh, you know, support your teammates. And I tried to play that role on the academic side of things because I knew how I, I, I really focused on this in high school. But I realized very quickly that time is one of the most valuable resources that we have. And for me to make it in anything I want to do, but especially playing college sports and getting an engineering degree, I would have to figure out how to master my time. And I, I got pretty good at it, you know, being able to schedule out things, keeping a very strict agenda book, and being able to say no. I think being able to say no is one of the most important things I've learned how to do. Because when you don't have a lot of time and you need to, when you have more activities to do than you have time, you have to be very shrewd and, and say, okay, these are the top three priorities that I need to get done today. Everything else is a nice to have. If I need to cut off the nice to have, I'll do that. And so that's some of the things I would try to, to help out with the, my teammates and, and preach on that. Um, but, but it is great to hear that, uh, you know, Coach Gundy would bring up my name and, and bring up those things because I did feel like I had something to give the team off of the field, even though I couldn't support them on the field. Yeah, I, I, we need to fast forward because we've got some great news to talk about with Devin Hedge, the former Oklahoma yeah. State Cowboy student athlete and started, um, he started as a freshman and, and, and was on a, a rocket ship uh, trajectory uh, in the sport of football until the, the Achilles injuries derailed him. But uh, I loved reading the, the, the story in the Wichita Eagle. I loved the background, the military background with your dad. I love the fact that to this day, Derby High School, which is one of the great high schools in the state of Kansas, not just on the field of athletics, but it's also a very good academic high school and uh, very squared away and that, that you're looked at as – kind of the face of, of, of Derby football, past and, and present and, and hopefully future, obviously. Uh, all those are great things about Devin Hedgefifth, but since leaving Oklahoma State and graduating here with honors, he's worked for Exxon and uh, has done well in the, in the oil business, in the business community. Now, though, you are, you are stepping it up, my man. You are going to the yeah. number one business school in the country to work on your MBA at Stanford. And I can't, I cannot say this enough, folks. Not everybody that applies, in fact, not even close. In fact, you probably know the percentage of applications that get uh, accepted to the Stanford Business School. But Devin Hedgeman yeah, is you. going to get his MBA at Stanford. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. It was definitely a blessing to get in. I mean, when I, you know, when I first started to, to apply to schools, and, and you know me, you know my mindset, and I think a lot of it came out in that article, but my dad just always raised me to try to be the best at whatever I do. And I don't care if it's mowing the lawn, applying to business school, whatever it is. And so naturally, I just um, kind of looked at the different programs out there, saw which ones I thought offered me the best strengths that I, I wanted to pick up or emphasize. Um, and Stanford ended up ended up being the one that I wanted to target, and, and lo and behold, they were uh, number one in the nation with a six percent acceptance rate, which is uh, specifically the, the toughest school to get into. Um, but it was an amazing ride, an amazing journey to be able to go through the application process and understand myself a little bit more. And I met so many amazing people along the way um, that just helped me out. And, and I think the journey really reminded me that there's a lot of people out there that are rooting for me. There's a lot of people out there that love me and support me. And it was just very refreshing to be able to see all of that. But 
I'm definitely excited to start my journey this fall. I'll move out to California in August, and I'm ready to get started. Uh, I think it's going to be a a lot of fun. I know that when Barry Sanders Jr. came and transferred back as a grad transfer and finished up at Oklahoma State, had a lot of time to talk to him. He had gone to Stanford as an undergrad, and uh, and the contacts – I mean, the people that you're going to have a chance to rub shoulders with, uh, leaders, even on, on faculty at, at Stanford, will be amazing. Oh, yeah. I, you're, you're spot on. So one, one two thing we've been doing as a class before we even start is we've been getting on Zoom calls together. So we'll have either small group Zoom calls with four or five people or we'll get on one-on-one. And, and the accomplishments that my classmates have already made and the things that they have already done blows my mind. I mean, I'm going to be in school with gold medalist winners. I'm going to be in school with world, world-class world um, uh, you know, musicians. I'm going to be in school with people that have started and sold their businesses already for hundreds of millions of dollars. You know, I was on a Zoom call with uh, a woman from that's based in China, and I Googled her afterwards, and she was like Forbes 30 under 30 in China. There's just so many amazing people that have great accomplishments. But the thing I'm most excited about is every single one is just a very good person, and they're focused on their personal development. They want to get better. They they want to understand how they come across as leaders, which is very – which, you know, Stanford draws that type of person. They draw the the type of person that – values how they come across to people and values leadership and helping other people and, and making organizations better. You know, they want to change lives. They want to change organizations. They want to change the world. And that's kind of the model that they, they live by. So I'm extremely blessed to, to be in that uh, realm of individuals, and, and I'm looking forward to it. Two, two things to wrap this up. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Did, didn't, and I know you and Dion are close friends, didn't Dion change his uh, change his number to honor you? Yeah. So, well, Dion um, Dion had I think Dion always had the number twenty eight. But what we did was we actually had a little group because Dion and I are best friends. We are we are extremely close. Friends, I know that. And we came in together in the the, the class together. But we have this group. We call ourselves. 218. So Dion wears uh, 2018. I wore 18 when I was able to play, and we kind of merged them together and, and call ourselves just 218. So we've our, we've always had that connection, and, and we've always been able to run together as a group and support each other. So very close. Okay. All right. Now, last last question for you, and I saved this for last. And you and I had had this conversation when we talked before. I am a firm believer that right now what we're seeing in college football with with athletes platform is just an example of what's going on across America. In fact, I had this conversation yep. with uh, Coach McCleskey, J.J. McCleskey, Jalen McCleskey's dad who's at, at Tulane, played in the NFL, yep. and mm-hmm. uh, he agreed that that America right now, we've, we've reached a point where America is listening more than ever to young young black men especially but i think i think people of color period but especially uh you know uh young african-american men you pride yourself on being a leader you're you're going to make yourself self an even better leader and a more equipped person with this with this opportunity at stanford how seriously are you taking what we're going through in this country and the opportunity to change not just opinions, but change mindsets of people about how they look at each other and especially how they look at, 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 at people like you, at, at, at young, you know, uh, African-American men. And, and I know you're striving to be your very best, but a little bit of, of how you're addressing I guess the current social climate along with your personal goals and what you want to get accomplished. Sure. And I love the, the fact that you use the word opportunity, Robert. So I think that's 
what it all boils down to. Um, you know, the question is how I'm kind of using my progression in life and the current social environment. I am a huge believer of the, the idea of being resilient. But the way that I define resilience is that we, resilience is not just overcoming an obstacle. It's not just learning how to overcome that obstacle that's standing right in front of me. Resilience to me is learning how to leverage that obstacle to make myself better, right? So if I face an adversity or an obstacle or anything else that comes my way, how can I use that very thing that was meant to keep me down to make myself better? And I think that's, that's what we're facing now, and that's how I'm trying to um, move forward and, and address the current environment that we're in. For me, I want to continue to push myself and make myself grow and stretch myself. I never want to be complacent. I want to continue to get better every single day. And because the current environment in this nation, there, there's tension, right? There's a lot of racial tension. There's a lot of things that are happening in the news uh, that have absolutely. always been happening for for decades. Um, and it's just tough. And I just want to use that as an opportunity to get better, as an opportunity to shed light and show everybody that there's a lot of black men out here that are really doing amazing in life. And there's a lot of change that we need that we need to happen. And so how can we get together and how can we continue to love each other? How can we support each other? How can we grow together? And how can we make change that is going to last? And that's a message I've been really trying to get across, especially in my community of Derby, Kansas, where I grew up. And it's a small town, probably of about 25,000 people. But I think we each have access to communities, and we should figure out what communities do I have influence in, and how can I influence our community for the better? How can I bring in love and a message of um, positivity to make the, the situation better? So that, that's kind of my view on it. I've just been trying to use it as an opportunity, and, and whatever we can do to come out on this other, to come out from this thing on the other side better, I think we should try to push forward that. Yeah, and I like your view. I like your view a lot, and I, I also like the fact that uh, there's no better place to start than where you started. So I, I, I appreciate yeah. that part of it, too. All right, now, one request. I understand. I, I got the color, and you look good in the T-shirt in the picture in the uh, in the eagle. Um uh, yeah. But don't ever, don't ever eliminate all the orange in your wardrobe, man. You can't, you uh, can't live uh, wearing Cardinal alone. You got to keep some orange in that uh, wardrobe for me, okay? Uh, I'll, I'll do that moving forward. I'll make sure to, to bring something on next time. It's my bad. No, no, that's okay. Hey, I, I understand it. Uh, you got, you got to support, you got to support that Stanford Business School color. But, but make exactly. sure you keep uh, that, you know, because, because the base. I guess the base is green, right? Isn't that uh, for, Derby? For Stanford? Oh yeah, for Derby. No, for, for Derby we got green. So you yeah. got you yeah, got to keep uh, you got to keep a little green, but always yeah. make sure you keep a little orange too. And uh, yeah. best of luck with the semester and and uh, the degree that I know you're going to get at Stanford and everything you're going to learn. And thank you. Uh, keep keep us updated on how it's going. I know I'll. I'll get regular updates. If not from you, I'll get them from Dion because uh, he is extremely right. proud of his bud. Thank you. I so. appreciate it. Thank you for the chat, and um, thanks for everything you're doing. Hey, uh, Devin, thank you. It uh, it was, like I say, uh, it was fun to run into you going to class, which is where I would run into you more often after you finish mm -hmm. playing. But uh you, uh, you are a definitely an outstanding individual and somebody that we can all be proud of uh, came out of Oklahoma State University. So thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. All right. All right. Devin Hedgepith, everybody. And